Yo, what's up guys? We got Pokemon here and today we're going to be talking about the tier shifts that we had for Pokemon Sword and Shield as well as uh, basically the usage stats and I'll be giving my thoughts on stuff. Remember that my thoughts are based on what I've played and what I've seen so I might not have the most stuff to say about super super low tiers but obviously if you guys want to comment something I'm always down to read and learn. So. Yeah, we're going to be talking about the uh, tier changes for April, and we'll be going over the uh, Gen OU usage stats and talking a little bit about that as well. So if you guys like this type of video, feel free to subscribe, leave a like, and let me know your thoughts as well, because like I said, I don't know everything, so I would love to know why certain things happen and, you know, just to be explained it. But uh, this is the type of video where it's just talking, not really too much to stimulate you visually. So... Feel free to do whatever you want on the side. Maybe, you know, walk on your treadmill or go for a run or eat. I don't know. It don't matter. It's just a talking video. But also, if you missed my upload last night, I did Megas to High Ladder with my boy Blunder. We used Mega DNC. It was a physical Mega DNC and it put in a lot of work. I uploaded it very late. It was almost 9 p.m. So if y'all want to check that out, go ahead and, uh, yeah, do so. so. Let's talk about the use of stats for March. Now, Keep in mind that the tier shifts are based on uh, three months usage, not just this month. So, uh, as you can see, well, I'll show you a little bit as we keep going, but I'll adjust it as we keep going. But let's go and look at these first. So, number one in usage is Lando. I mean, makes sense. Uh, it's just a great Pokemon, right? From Scarf, defensive, special defensive. A lot of people are running Toxic uh, with Earthquake, Stealth Rock, U Turn. Toxic is great because you wear down. Uh, certain defoggers, but also opposing landers, which is always awesome too. Um, Dragonfall number two, about damn time the Dragonfall is back up in usage. I think Specs is incredible right now. I don't know, Specs is just amazing. There's no Urshifu um, single strike, obviously, to sucker punch and threaten it. Uh, so Specs is just clicking Shadow Ball a lot, and Draco Meter obviously dents Mandibuzz. You even see Thunder or Thunderbolt sometimes on it as well. For Mandibuzz, Pelipper, Corviknight, uh, and U Turn as well. Heatran is number three in usage, and I think this is, again, very, very respectable. Heatran can do, do whatever it wants. It could be a stall breaker with taunt Magma Storm, Earth Power, and beating Pokemon like Toxapex 1v1, uh, or it could set up Stealth Rock. Uh, people can run Specs or Scarf. So, I mean, in, in terms of the top three, four, five, or ten, rather, these are all Pokemon that you expect to be there. I expect Rillaboom to continuously move up, by the way, just because I think right now Rillaboom is incredible. And even though number seven is basically one of the best Rillaboom answers there are, uh, it's still just amazing versus all of these Pokemon. Garchomp is another Mon that we're seeing finally, not finally, because Garchomp is always, like I think, around top 10 area, uh, or at least top 15. But we're seeing it have a lot more usage. And the one that I'm most excited about, by the way, this is it. Number 12. I told you guys. I told you guys last time we did tier changes. And by the way, is anybody else happy that we're not having new tiers every 15 days? That was, <laughs> last year was really terrible. I mean, there was a lot of bad stuff that happened last year. Yeah, we were in a pandemic. Still in a pandemic, but I'm talking about for Pokemon wise, like the tier changes were crazy. La the the ending quarter, the fourth quarter of last year, is just wild for the Crown Tundra. But we see at number twelve, Lele slowly but surely moving up, and right under that, we also see Urshifu uh, Rapid Strike. So that's always awesome to see. Um, a few other ones that we're seeing pick up as well. I'm sorry that this is like that, but. <laughs> I see it just the same way you guys do, but we see Skarm is picking up in usage at 35, uh, Regieleki at 37, so we're seeing that for dual screens. Uh, number 40, we have Zapdos, and Mew is up there as well, Tarantar at number 27, I think Titar is incredible right now, and then we see Bisharp at number 23, so that's a Pokemon, again, that's going to actually tie into what we're about to talk about, but um, the actual tier change themselves, so from Yu to OU, Talking about Bishop. Now, Bishop has been rising in popularity a lot. It's been uh, as a means to punish Defog. Obviously, it's always been as a means to punish Defog, right? But the problem was that even if you brought in Bisharp on Corviknight's Defog, you went for knockoff and then you just died to body press, right? So you lost your Bisharp. However, one set has been rising up even more. Uh, besides Swords Dance, which I think Swords Dance is still very amazing. It got even better. And again, this is something I talked about um, when Urshifu got banned a while back. It's been a while. But that dark types would, or even uh, Spectre too, uh, but uh, dark types would start to rise. And it, 
to take its place, right? Because ghost types are getting better and better. So Bishop Rising because Dragapult's getting better as well. But one set that people have been running is Choice Ban Bisharp because what Choice Ban Bisharp does is it physically defensive Corviknight Defog Stealth Rock and as Bisharp comes in, Choice Ban Bisharp does 88% minimum to uh, physically defensive Corviknight with knockoff. So it's a means of knocking it out and still pressuring with your Stealth Rock and your Spike the entire team. So that's one of the um, one of the sets that's uh, been used on Bisharp that obviously made it uh, rise up. A little bit more in usage. I mean, if we look at OU as well, Bisharp actually matches up very well versus the top 10. Uh, yes, they can all beat it 1v1 depending on sets, but Bisharp also has the potential to beat them all 1v1 as well. So, pretty cool. You see Bisharp finally rising up from UU to OU. Kiram as well, another one that we were just... It was just a matter of time, honestly. We had to wait the three months for the tier shift. So, uh, Kiram is definitely... At least people know from, from me and Blunder, the bane of our existence. Uh, it is just so good. Ice and ground coverage is amazing. And, I mean, the biggest thing is that it, it's special Mammal Swine, right? But it has Freeze Dry, a Stab Freeze Dry. So, it can actually threaten bulky waters too, which would otherwise be a decent check. Sub Dragon Dance is still a thing. Sub Bruce as well. Uh, Heavy Duty Boots was also a blessing for Kiram as well, just being able to bring it in. But I think Spect is, in my opinion, the best set. Uh, just because it's one of those mons that it doesn't care about your defensive backbone of Corviknight Toxapex or if you're running Tangrowth or Lanner's Mandibuzz or shoot, even a uh, even Galarian Slowking has to be careful about hazards plus like Specs Ice Beam or Specs Earth Power and it doesn't KO back. It just does damage and prays for a poison. So definitely a mon that is. It's about time that it rises back up to OU. Skarmory is another mod that rises back up. I actually think this a lot, has a lot to do with the uh, fact that Bisharp is also up there too. But Skarmory just spiking is just so good. Uh, Spike's offense are incredible. And being able to um, very basically pressure the defoggers and rapid spinners, right? So uh, one set that Skarm runs is Spike's uh, Toxic Roost Body Press. Uh, that's one of the sets. There's a lot of different sets. Uh, I've seen fast Skarmory as well. I think Finchinator used a fast Skarmory so they could body press to it KO Magazine, which is really cool. Uh, I've seen Iron Defense. I've seen Taunt. I've seen Whirlwind, Brave Bird. Uh, I've seen Roost, obviously. But, uh, you know, being able to Toxic Mana Buzz, it's, it's done, right? Body press offensively, smacking something like Hydreigon if it tries to default on you, especially if it's like that support special defensive crappy Hydreigon, which some people still run. I hate that set. Um... Obviously, you threaten extra draw a spinner, and you could spike infinitely on a lot of physical attackers like Hippo. That's a big one as well. You come in on Hippo. Like, Corviknight comes in on Hippo too, but unless Corviknight's running, like, Iron Defense or, or Bulk Up or whatever, it doesn't actually, like, it just sits there for a long time. It can't run Toxic because there's no Toxic TM in this generation. Hopefully, that's something that changes in the future. But Skarmory has that difference. I mean, can I just say, and I always say this every single time I talk about one of the Steel Flying, that I love that they're all three different, right? Corviknight, uh, U-Turn, uh, Pivotmon, right? But also can be a sweeper with bulk up and, and whatnot too. Um, and great defogger. Right? Then you have Skarmory, which is amazing spiker as well. And I think that body press was just a great blessing to it because you're two way killing Pokemon like Heatran too. And you have Celestella, right? Which can obviously be defensive if it wants to with Leech Seed Protect stuff. It can be offensive as well with Meteor Beam or um, well not Zemu's in this generation, but Meteor Beam is pretty cool and Atomize as well. And just in general, just really good. So uh, being able to uh, move up. I'm happy about that. And we're just going to be looking at the OU tier as we're talking about this. Let's see if I can fix this a little bit. Whoops. Nope. That's good. You guys, this is the best you guys are going to get. But yeah, I, I like Skarm a lot. I like I like Spikes a lot right now too. And I love Skarm plus like Pult, though I like Ferrothorn and Pult better. But I think another op uh, another reason, excuse me, why Skarm moved up uh, is because uh, the Toxic variant can also help deal with Garchomp, which is super strong right now. I mean, like I said, if we look at the top 10 in usage uh mons that skarmory can beat kartana rillaboom potentially garchomp landorus uh it has to, it can do a ko heat trend upon switching with stealth rock plus body press or spikes with body press right and it still chunks away at ferrothorn so it's just like one of those mons that like it can, and they can come in and sit on like knock off moonblast with fable because it resists and unlike corviknight which is it's still really good and can get a slow u-turn off and obviously pressure stall it as well it can get up spikes in front of it so it makes sense why scar moved up Slowking's another mon that moved up and i think a lot of this uh is again like it's just such a it's lele is number 12 in usage so slow king should move up because slow king is not too akio by specs lele uh as long as i have heavy duty boots on so it's a great option for that. Also, it's good for Needle King as well. Uh, one of the better Needle King. Uh, one of the better in terms of bros, it's like the best Needle King switching, uh, regular Slow King. 
So, uh, because the other ones are obviously too AKO'd or weak to earth power, whereas this one isn't, uh, unless they're running like Thunderbolt or Thunder, but even then. But of course, Slowbro gets knocked, or Slowking, excuse me, gets knocked off, but just being able to Future Sight, Slack off, uh, Teleport, and Scald. I've also seen Toxic on it. I've seen Ice Beam as well for Garchomp, so now let it set up. It also hit Dragapult. Also, speaking of Dragapult, being able to pivot in on Spec Draco Meteor or even a Spec Shadow Ball just to see what you want to do before you can pivot into your next Mon and Regenerator, obviously amazing. And then Zera Aura also moved up. We have two more, two electric types to move up. Zera Aura moved up from UU to OU. Again, I think Zera Aura is incredible right now as well. I think Bulk Up got really, really, really good again, and with the rise of Dragapult as well. Like, it's, I think it's just nasty. Like, I love Bulk Up a lot. Uh, I love uh, the Heavy Duty Boots set as well. They can just Voltage around too. It's, just, it's speed tier is really good, especially in a metagame uh, where it's the fastest Pokemon, right? Like, it's literally the fastest Pokemon. And you're seeing Dark types move up as well, like Bisharp and Weavile. Um, of course, like I said, this is this month, so there's a reason why, uh, that's the reason why Weavile, even though you see Weavile right now at number 29 in usage, uh, Weavile actually is not OU. Uh, it's not OU by usage, it is uh, still a BL Knight, but Weavile's number 29 usage, but because it's based on the past three months, it didn't matter. That's also the reason why I stopped that to the top series, because they do it based on three months. Like, we could have something up here, but it wouldn't work. But Weavile, another mod that people are finally uh, starting to wake up on, because SD, uh, or even Banded with Triple Axle as a threat, as long as Triple Axle lands. But yeah, Zero Rock, great speed tier, knock off, uh, drain punch. I've seen Toxic as well. I've seen Player Off as well for Como, even the Como isn't as common. And then one of my favorite ones that moved up uh, back to OU is Magnazone. Again, I thought it was a matter of time before Magnazone um, moved back up, especially because we're seeing like these ice ties, we're seeing Sloking Scarm, she even Bisharp. Magnazone just matches up decently versus everything. Uh, you obviously have the Specs one, which is the one I like a lot, especially when I run something like Lele or Shifu. Um, or Lele plus Zone is just incredibly strong because you trap Corviknight. You don't have to run. You don't have to drop like Focus Lash or Psy Shock for uh, Thunderbolt on your Corviknight. Um, or, or excuse me, on your Lele to beat Corviknight because Magnezone just does a job. And obviously as well, you can do the Iron Defense stuff uh, with Body Press. So I mean, Zone is just good. Zone is good, and it's about damn time that it moves up to OU. From any be able to argue, uh, nothing really unexpected here, right? Mian Shao, uh, every single time I did an R, you showed on live, we saw Mian Shao, we saw how good it was, whether it be Scarf or um, or Assault Vest as well. Uh, and the same thing with Rose Raid. Rose Raid had a lot of utility, being able to spike in the tier. Uh, if we actually look at usage stats as well for RU, if we look at usage stats for RU as well, just looking at Mian Shao, like just a, a fast knockoff. Um, a U-turn. I can't tell if these are the actual user stats as well because it's really difficult for me to like see this comparison because this is for March, right? But look at look at these guys, by the way. Look at UU. UU is wild. Uh, this is for March, right? But like it, it, it obviously doesn't take into account. Uh, I can't believe like Rose Raid and Manshot were in top ten, but whatever. Forget what I was saying. Anyway, Scarf is really good. Uh, has a good speed tier over Zergatry and things like that too. Obviously, Knockoff is really strong. Your Stone Edge is good. Poison Jab as well. It was just a good Pokemon. In general, me and Child, great Pokemon. So we all said, even though it was NU, we all said that it was going to be, uh, we all said that it was going to move up. Everybody knew that. Everybody knew it was going to move up. Shark is another one that can take advantage of Spike. Close combat was a blessing for Sharpedo this generation. And Toxtricity as well, in my opinion, is better in RU than, I mean, it's it was Demon in the, uh, the other tier. But uh, if we, I just want to get the NUBL mods out because we had, just looking at NUBL real quick. This. All right. Yeah, and I think it was just a demon in the RU tier as well. Being able to break through size and toe. Obviously, Overdrive is also strong for something like Registeel too. Um, as you can see, it's number six in usage for good reason too, because you have toe kissing up there. Like it's just one of those mods that can't be o coded by the ones above it. Besides size and toe, and even size and toe, it can just boom burst like, and smack it. Really, like if it's if size and toe, if size and toe is physically defensive and took a spike, it dies. <laughs> like that's just it. Uh, we see Gastrodon also move up from NU to RU. Uh, I mean, with Electrotypes being as good as they are in the tier, specifically Raikou, number three in usage, right? Can also stop Scarf's Toxtricity unless it clicks Energy Ball. Uh, stops, or excuse me, Zerkatry unless it clicks Energy Ball. Stops Toxtricity unless it clicks Boom Burst. Also can check Cloyster, can check Cobalion, check Celex, can sit on Noivern. And it makes sense why Gastrodon moved up. And Golisopod being a fast spiker. I like Golisopod plus Manshout a lot, like the, the combination of the two. Um, I love them a lot with like Magnezone as well. 
Mang Zone being able to like resist the air slashes from uh, Toekis and just come together. Uh, but that first impression is nice. Knockoff is obviously good, and it's just solid mod. And then of course we have the PUB out of RU as well, which is Rose Raid, another mod that we expected to uh, move up. And I mean, it's just basically you look at what happens here, right? It has a good speed tier above Toekis. It can resist all of Raikou's attacks besides extra sensory. Uh, spikes on Sizem Toad. Resist every attack that Zerg goes through. Literally every attack that Zerg goes for. Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Dazzling Gleam, and Energy Ball. Strong Sleep Powder as well. So I might have lost Hidden Power Fire with Technician or just Hidden Power Fire in general, but still good. And Sludge Bomb is very strong. From PUBL to NU, we have X Plowed, Sir Fetchingtons, and Tauros as well. And uh, first off, Sir Fetch, number nine in usage. Yep, I mean, makes sense. It gets, gets quick close combat on everything above it. It's fast and Sylveon as well. Um, for the most part, defensive Sylveon. Uh, and two Akios, every Mon here with close combat or Okos them. So, makes sense. I love that Flygon's number three in usage. I think that Flygon is amazing in you. And I love defensive more than I even like offensive because it just sits on Copper Raja and things like that. So, that's awesome. Uh, we saw x Cloud as well. I mean, in terms of breakers, right? The best steals, you're seeing them right here. Bronze on a Copper Raja. Copper Raja... It does not switch into more than two boom bursts. After that, it's just like worn down. Even with like leftovers and whatnot. And bronze, obviously, you just nuke with blast. I mean, you can nuke with uh, copper Roger with blast too. But just a good speed tier, especially because the tier is not. It's not fast, right? Like you see, Salazar is a really fast Pokemon, but after that, it slows down a little bit. So Xplod is like that good mid speed tier that's faster than all the defensive Pokemon, and it just breaks them. It's basically the toxicity of Nu. Uh, and then we have Tauros. I like Tauros a lot. I like. I think it has Throat Chop and stuff, which is boosted by Sheer Force. Obviously, Close Combat 2. Pretty decent uh, breaker uh, in the tier as well. I'm glad it moved up, too. Uh, and then as well, from P to NU, I think the a few of the big ones, uh, Talonflame. Talonflame makes a lot of sense. Uh, defensively, Talonflame is there to sit on the number one in usage, which is Copper Raja, unless it's from Drock Slide, because if it goes for Heavy Slam or Power Whip or whatever it goes for, Talonflame runs Flame Body, uh, so it gets burnt. It also defogs. It, it can... Taunt, beat Sylveon and set up in front of it, beat Bronzong as well, Will-O-Wisp and just threaten a whole lot of Pokemon. We got uh, Braviary, I think Braviary is also another amazing one too. Uh, being able to sub bulk up and set up in front of Copper Raja, set up in front of like bulkier Pokemon like Vaporeon, set up on Bronzong. Uh, I, I was using sub bulk up a lot when I was doing NU lives, I think the recent one I did was with Pikachu. Uh, then we have Hail as well which moved from PE to NU, so uh, these guys and like all four of these guys, right? Artavish, uh, Aurorus, Vanillix, and uh, Alone Sand Slash, all basically the same team. It was a hail movement. Fought a lot of hail on the ladder. I think they recently banned it. Let me check real quick. I believe NU recently banned it. Yep. They very recently banned it on Friday. And honestly, it makes sense. They were actually testing Artavish too. And there, were all, there was people that said do nothing. Uh, nobody wanted that. But it looks like Snow Warning got a, a super majority in terms of 75%. Um, so, I mean, that's going to obviously... That really sucks because that means that makes me looks and and, uh, and Aurora's worse. Does that affect... Does that affect the lower tier too? I don't even know. As in, as a result, Artemis and Aurora will both be unbanned from NU. Oh, okay, so they, they, they let that back. That's cool. Artisalt and Aurora Vale, excuse me. But does that mean it actually affects the, uh... I want to read this real quick. I'm going to read this real quick. Also, just to cover these, just because they did pop a couple times, I'd rather not have threads. This room clogged up, blah, blah, blah. Why did we not consider Slash Rush as Ice Rock bands for the most obvious one, Icy Rock? For tier purposes, we always look towards the least complex and intrusive band possible. That is when it comes to a decision. And most of the time, it can fall under a certain framework. <laughs> I'm tired of the word complex, but we refer to band Pokemon first, ability second, items third, and moves fourth. Icy Rock at this point in time is not considered for the ban because it's just more intrusive way to solve the issue. While it might be a simple ban, it really does not address what the true issues with Hail is and why the teams are as good as they are. While it may also be an enabler, it's not at the level of Snow Warning or even the abusers themselves to be considered. Slush Rush is a bit more fair, but it's an ability that's solely based on Snow Warning and would have the same collateral that Snow Warning would have with PU in terms of policy. Slush Rush also is only the common like, I, I, yeah, but if you ban Slush Rush instead of Snow Warning, I can still use a damn Blizzard Vanillix. Uh, so it looks like, I'm, I'm done reading it. Uh, it looks like, uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to uh, to use that. And I think that also doesn't work in PU, but I'm pretty sure, uh, I don't remember if you can even, what was banned from PU as well. But 
Uh, so that really sucks. So that's a big hit for the Iceman Cone as well as Aurorus. Uh, one of the biggest things about Vanillix is the fact that it could Blizzard. So uh, I definitely expect this thing to just drop right back down to, to PU. Uh, or ZU, whatever it just came from. Wow, ZU. Uh, that's that's wild. Man, tier shifts are wild. <laughs> ZU Iceman Cone, that's crazy. That monk could work with OU. I six out in the tournament in that month last year. I know you. But uh, I expect them to drop down. Same thing with Artovich as well as Alolan Sandslash. Uh, though I liked Alolan Sandslash earlier uh, or later last year uh, with uh, in terms of NU Spiker and a Ninja Sancer, I knew has obviously changed a ton from when I played it in tournament. Uh, and then we have Vaporeon as well. Bulky Water, Wish Passer. I mean, yeah, you see it at number five in usage. It just sits on Flagon, sits on Kaparaji, even with Power Up, can burn it. Sit on Broadzone. If it has Heal Ball, doesn't really have to worry about too many Pokemon in general. So, yeah, makes sense. From ZUB out to PU, we have Toxic Croak uh, and Scrafty, which you guys cannot see. Let me see if I can. Whatever, that's going to look a little bit bad for a second. Oh my god. Nope. Whatever, it's going to look like that. We got, uh, from ZBL to PU, we have Toxicroak, as how is Toxicroak PU, and uh, Scrafty, so work offline. Let's look at the uh, the PU tier real quick. Let's also look at the user stats here. But PU has, PU has Talonflame, Vaporeon, Vaporeon's gone. Uh, Whimsicott, Mesprit, Parisian, Heliolus, Jolteon, Lantern, Braviary, and Weezing. I mean, you can see why. Uh, you can see why Toxic would be good. Being able to do it number two in usage, which is a poor out. Also, struggling off hits from a majority of the uh, the top ten mods as well. Uh, so that makes sense as well. Uh, Scrafty too being a threat with Dragon Dance, not being fast in Windsor after a Dragon Dance, I think is pretty bad. But being able to set up on a, a plethora of mods and knocking off and threatening Weezing, uh, it makes sense. Makes sense why that mod uh, moved up. But I think Toxic makes a little bit more sense, obviously, because you have bulky waters in number top 10. So, uh, from Z to PU as well, we see Lycanroc and Palisand. So, let's also go back to that. Uh, Lycanroc, I mean, number one in usage is Talonflame. So, being able to sell a rock on number one in usage is cool. Good speed tier as well. Uh, Coast Climb is obviously a blessing, too. I mean, Stone Edge and Fighting Moves are just super strong here in the, uh, the 1 through 10. Uh, and then Palisand as well. I guess Palisand will move up because... It's a check to uh, electric type spam like Heliolisk and Jolteon. Obviously, they can use Surf and uh, Shadow Ball respectively, but also be able to check number this this dog that came up as well. So cool. Now let's look at the drops. So we see from OU to UBL, we got a lot of disrespectful drops. In fact, I think all five of those mods. I think three of those five mods are very disrespectful to drop. Feel free to guess right now which three out of five I am talking about. I'll give you two seconds. All right, that's it. Is Zapdos, Latios, and Barrascuta, I think, are the disrespectful drops. Honestly, the other two make a lot of sense. But from OU to EBL, we have Galarian, Zapdos. And again, if you look at usage stats, Galarian, Zapdos was actually... Uh, Galarian, Zapdos was number 40, as you can see right here. Uh, but because it is based on three months and not just this month, uh, that's not something we see. But uh, I definitely spam the hell out of Galarian, Zapdos, and OU. Uh, I think Bandit is incredible. I think Bandit is the best set, honestly. I also think Life Orb is really good with Thunderous Kick, uh, bulk up their attack. But um, Glaren's Atlas moving down from OU to UUBL. Again, uh, I truly believe that Choice Band is incredible, and I think that main reason why it moved down is because it just didn't have that usage in January and February. Uh, of course, we had different Pokemon in January and February, too. We had, like, Cinderace and Magirna as well. Uh, I think we even had our Shifu and other, uh, like, other fighting types fighting for dollars though we did see a lot of dual screens with zapdos back then too i'm trying to remember the metagame as much as i can spectrate as well but uh right now i think choice band is incredible and i think that this is a mod that will probably shoot back up in a couple months uh right back to uh ou as well i uh, just choice band like i said has no switches just being able to brave bird and close combat everything is so good and you bring this thing in on a default oh it's better than bisharp because your close combat is to a kill and slow bro Close combat to a kill on Landorus, right? You're already to a kill on Corviknight Raw, which is a raw one. I mean, plus, you have the U turn momentum. And I personally like to run Facade as a last move just because you get status a lot. You can bring it on Scald and you just click choice Band Facade. So, amazing month. It was very disruptive when that fell down, but I understand that you should just based on three months for this one. ODU, you got Buzzle. Buzzle fell down to U, and I think this is something that we saw happening for sure once Urshifu got banned. So, I mean, one of the biggest things that Buzzle checked. 
Uh, obviously, the strongest metagame for Buzzwole was when Kieran Black, uh, as well as Zygarde and Urshifu were all in OU, right? Because then you have Buzzwole, physically defensive. He just got that Roost, that Drain Punch, that Ice Punch. You beat him 1v1. You can even run Bulk Up if you wanted to. And don't get me wrong, I think Buzzwole is still a good Pokemon, being able to Toxic and Drain Punch. And we actually fought an Assault Vest one in Rain. That might have been National Dex. No, I think that was National Dex. Uh, but. It just doesn't have the. Uh, it, I don't. I don't think that it really has the means to do it because yeah, it still checks. If you look at the, uh, if you look at these guys in top ten, yeah, it still checks Garchomp, still checks Rillaboom, still checks Landers, still checks Kartana. It's good, but it also can just as easily uh, get overwhelmed by hazards, by like by status, by toxic specifically. And then if you look at like eleven through freaking. If you look at eleven through sixteen, where we have Coco Lele. Or Shifu, or Shifu is one of the checks, but Zapdos, Volcarona, Torn T, and then you have uh, then you have Feeny at number seventeen as well. And you have something like Kiram as well. You have the the Kings right here, twenty one and twenty two. I feel like even though Buzzle is a good physically defensive Pokemon that can check, it's always forced to roost, and it doesn't get it loses you momentum as well. Like in terms of at least Corviknight and Lanners, if they're forced to roost, at least they can get momentum with you turn after. Whereas Buzzle, you have the hard switch. Shoot, it doesn't even beat Dragonite because Dragonite dual wing beats and Dragonite is like I, I feel like everything just beats. I'm surprised Swampert still owe you by the way. I'm very surprised Swampert still owe you. Uh, pleasantly surprised in a sense, but yeah, it just I don't think Buzzle is very good. It just doesn't come in on enough Pokemon, and if the Pokemon that comes in on Landorus, Rillaboom, uh, whatever Ferrothorn. Either Toxic or U-Turn out or knock it off and then loses heavy to do boots or Rocky Helmet, which means it doesn't check Pokemon as easily as it could and it gets worn down by Hazard. So, yeah, Buzzle falling down makes a lot of sense in my opinion. Uh, then we have Latios, and this is probably one of the most disrespectful drops I've ever seen in my life up there with Tyranitar. Okay, ever dropping down in UU. This is this is Big O's. This is Drop a Draco. This is... This is the broken mon in Gen 5 that probably should have been banned, but they refuse to ban it, even though that generation has Pursuit, which is crazy because, of course, there's no fairy type, so Latios is absolutely busted in black and white OU. Um, but yeah, Latios moved from OU to UU. Now, if you guys didn't know, Latios was actually quick man from the, uh, the UU tier. Uh, Latios as well as Alakazam. Uh, Alakazam actually got banned by the council, and Latios got banned as well. Alakazam, uh, just to talk about it real quick, but as you can see, it had number... Um, it in usage. I guess the counter stuff was just too much and playing games with that plus like psychic and life form as well. Uh, so that's and plus nasty plot as well was a big one. But Latios moving down from OU to UU. Now if you guys didn't know about Latios, Latios got a lot of buffs this generation. Uh, two of them being Mystical Fire and Aura Sphere. Um, so that was great for it. Obviously there being no pursuit is a big one as well. But I think the uh, I think a lot, I still think Latios is amazing by the way in OU. I think that life orb 3 attack Latios is, is crazy because it doesn't sw you don't switch into it. You don't. It, it hits things with super effective damage and that's it. I think that Slow King moving up has a little bit of a a reason for that because you just pivot into it and you go out to your fast mount like Dragapult and then you just is this am I still getting turned offline? Like what what are, what is hitting me up? Why am I getting messages? But being able to pivot into like Dragapult or something too and Dragapult rising up in usage as well. Uh, you would think that because Spectre A was banned too, that Latios would move up, uh, and Urshifu being banned all help it. But yeah, it ended up going down, and I think that, like I said, I think this is one of those mods that's just not as explored right now in the tier. I feel like it's way easier for people to, if they want to throw on a uh, Psychic type, they just throw on Lele, or like Slow King, or Slow Bro, or whatever. Whether it be defensive or offensive, you could use either or. Even Slow King is starting to run, uh, Galarian is starting to run like Nasty Plot at times, or Combine variants too. Uh, so I think it's just too easy for people to throw those on. But I think Latios, again, is one of those mods that's just a little bit underexplored right now. Uh, and, and just in terms of, like, special attacking Dragon, Dragapult is at an all-time high uh, with specs. So that's something like Shadow Ball is just easier. It's harder to switch into Shadow Ball from Dragapult than it is to have to predict with Latios, right? Like, Latios, if it wants to hit, like, Ferrothorn or Heatran or whatever, it has to click or Sphere or Mystical Fires. If you're specs, you have to predict, right? Uh, whereas Dragapult has Shadow Ball, which is... You know, there's two Pokemon that take Shadow Ball. There's Dark Types, which most of them still take a decent chunk from it, unless they're named Mandibuzz. And uh, there is also um, Normal Types, which you can just U-turn out anyway. And plus, you're a Ghost Type, so you can sub DD on Blissey. So, uh, Latios has to, like, click it. So, I think it's just a lot of, like, it's prediction-oriented uh, right now to use it. Um, though I still think Specs is good, I think Life, uh, Life Orb is great as well. And I think this is a Pokemon that we will see rise up and people will use it and start to use it in tournaments too. Um, but, yeah, like it, like it can crush every one of these Muns in uh, top 10. 
But so can like Dragapult crush most of these mods as well. Uh, though maybe not Pex, depending on the circumstance. But the fact that like the fairies are all up here as well. Uh, and then you have Slow King rising up in usage as a, a pivot. And it's easier to either click Shadow Ball from Dragapult or like Freeze Dry from Curum in terms of uh, Specs Dragons right now. Because uh, Dragons are at a pretty... Like Dragons are pretty good right now, right? You have Dragapult and Garchomp at top 10. You have Curum right here at number 20. Um, as well as Dragonite right here at number 32. Uh, Dragon number 39. Like... They're doing really well. They're doing their thing in the OU tier, uh, despite a million fairies. But I just think that a lot of that has to do with Latios. I still think that Latios is incredible, and I will be using it. And uh, I think that people will sleep on it, just like they did on Lele a few months ago. But I, I, to see Lele at number 11 or 12 in usage is so happy. Like It makes me so happy. So I'm, I'm proud to see Lele uh, moving up. What is MV hitting me up? But... Yeah, so again, I think that it got quick banned from you though, so to be expected, right? I mean, it's it's stronger Latias <laughs> to be completely expected, and I mean Latias is another mod that got banned from you you because of Mystical Fire and uh, stuff too. So and no pursuit. Uh, last but not least, we got Mo oh not last but not least because the bear's cute as well, but Moltres fell down as well. I just think Moltres is not very good. I mean, and when Magirna and Cinderace were gone. Uh, Moltres was a decent check to both. There's, uh, it was just a, a, an okay check to Rashifu too, just because of Flame Body, as well. Um, nothing is good. Everything in their mom runs knockoff. It loses to basically every mod in top uh, in top ten. She even Feral Throw beat it one v one with Leech Seed and knockoff as it comes in and get a Stealth Rock later and just pressure it. So uh, it makes sense. And like, yeah, it's still a Rillaboom check, but I don't want my Rillaboom check that gets once it gets knocked off by Rillaboom taking fifty percent. So it makes sense that Moltres eventually uh, would move down. And in terms of, uh, especially because like Sloking and stuff are, are picking up as well. But in terms of Yu I mean, Scissor at number one, uh, decent Como check too. Zero Aura is OU now. Uh, can shrug off hits from Crocodile, can shrug off Hurricane and, uh, and Flamethrowers from Salamence as well. Like, it, it might have found a place, especially because Sloking's up there too. Yu about to become a brand new tier, so maybe Moltres will find its place. Moltres will definitely uh, find its place, in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, it makes sense why it fell down. Another one, like, Buzzle falling down at no point we're using Moltres, so it fell down as well. That was another reason why people use Moltres. Uh, but then from OU to RU, a Barraskewda, man, what? So Barraskewda fell down. I'm surprised, because I still think Rain is incredible. And I think that, in the, obviously, if you're running Rillaboom, it makes a different story. But the fact that people are using Sloking as well over Bromore, too, which means that Liquidation 2 it KOs you in the Rain. Uh, from like Choice Band Barrascuta, I think that there's, like, there's a role involved, but I'm pretty sure there's like 55% or something. Maybe Jam I got crit in that live, I don't know. Uh, but uh, being able to flip turn around, uh, close combat as well. There, there's no Kirina, there's no like, I don't know. I feel like this mod is like, it's just one of those mods that's just so good on rain. So I think you'll still, you'll obviously still see rain as whenever it comes out, but uh, like it's decent versus Cartonic because Choice Band Close Combat smacks and you're faster. Close Combat, Close Combat. You just flip turn on everything. It really is just packs that's the other way. Because you, you never click psychic effects, right? Bear skin, right? Like, ever. You know, you click flip turn, liquidation, and close combat. Those are the three modes. But you do have psychic fangs occasionally. Uh, uh, I, just get, I guess the relevant usage and whatnot as well. Everybody having uh, their bulky water. I think it's just a mod that, again, as you see rain, you're always going to see bear skin on rain. It's better than Kingdra, in my opinion. Uh, just because. Physical liquidation just hits stronger and more accurately as well uh, than missing a hydro pump every single time. So it's a mod you'll see. Uh, to see it in RU though is interesting. Uh, it has a good speed tier in the RU tier, so who knows what it actually does? Like, uh, definitely was it banned from RU before? I feel like it was. What am I looking for? Oh, I'm going to the right place. <laughs> Where am I? Why I think I was doing, going to the wrong place? I was like, where am I? What am I typing? Um, let's see what R U S to say. Real quick, Zygar ten percent ban as well. This is their new stage. This is this is the February twenty eighth. Okay. The fact that I see a damn basculin in R U as a theory mod makes me think that just Barrascuta is going to be so because Barrascuta is what basculin wished it was, right? Uh, but I love its speed tier. I love its speed tier. I don't think it's going to be like ridiculously crazy. 
as well. But like strong close combats to even wear down something like Seism Toad and just really fast naturally, I think is super strong for that. Like faster than Noivern as well. So I'm excited to see how it does that. It obviously makes our uh, rain better in the RU tier too. If I'm not mistaken. You can definitely use Drizzle in the Naryu because I've used Drizzle in a live. So just to make Rain even better is super strong. From Aryu to Enyu, we have Entei as well as Glastria. Now, Entei, I think fire types are super strong in the uh, the Enyu tier. Obviously, you have uh, Talonflame rising up too. And you have Salazzo in top 10. Salazzo's number 10 if you guys can't see. There you go. There's Salazzo. There she is. Can we get a, a Salak King or something? Or, oh, we have Slack King. But you know what I mean? Like the Salandit uh i don't know i want a, like a bandit lord or whatever I, I want a male version of it too uh i also want a comb king too <laughs> but uh yeah so i think fire types are super strong uh in the tier i like entei a lot uh, i think that one set that actually looks really cool is the pressure entei set so like a sub uh entei set with uh calm mind so it could be like like you just burn like sub calm mind Lava Plume. I think any Pokemon that can run Lava Plume and has the ability to go special can do it. And then you can do like Scorching Sand if you want it for opposing Entei or something like that. Can't hit a Power Grass or anything, but uh, you run it bulky enough or or even like the Sunny Day Weakness Policy set with Solar Beam. Just some fun stuff. Obviously Bandit can work too, but uh, the fact that like Vaporeon is up there it just kind of stops Bandit as well. And Flygon can deal with that too. But if you burn Flygon, not a threat. Uh, you can Combine enough and you can Pressure Stall out. Uh, you can also just run Subcombine Protect with Lava Plume, right? And just pressure stall all the Scalds from Vaporeon and run something like T-Spike. That sounds really good, too. Uh, Glass Curate is interesting. Uh, I think the Ice types are always solid, right? Especially when you look at these two right, Mons and it has a decent speed tier. It's not. It's not that fast. But when you run enough speed, it's faster than the bulkier Pokemon. So, um, well, some of them. Uh, and just obviously Ice is strong too. Maybe a Choice Band set might be something people run because Choice Band, Ice Cream Crash, and Close Combat are very, very strong. I wish I had Glacial Lance like like its friend. Uh, but interesting to see that. It makes Trick Room a little bit better too. You have some good Trick Room mods down there as well, like Bronzo. Um, so that's going to be an uh, interesting thing. I'll try that out when I play Enyu as well. If anyone wants to leave me some teams of that. But it's weird because Enyu is just its a whole... I keep leaving Smogon and I don't mean to because I want to go back and look at things, but... And it's just a whole different tier. The ban hail. What oh, we got? Viability Rangers. What y'all think? B plus, Toronto Solid Pick, blah, blah, blah. It's unranked. Yep, I agree. Uh, no, this was before tier shifts, I guess, so nobody has it. Oh, <laughs> look. Hey, I didn't realize you did this. It's awesome. Thank you. Uh, this person passed me this. This thumbnail is fire, by the way. It's from Powerpuff Girls, if y'all didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> we just took out the power of them girls and put Stardew, Flag on and, and, and Rose Red. Right? That's what I do. I, I tell Pedro, hey, this is a really cool background. Let me look here. Can you put this Pokemon, this Pokemon, this Pokemon? He makes it look great. But uh, yeah, overall, um, these stats are really interesting. I'm, I'm excited to see how things happen. Uh, we do see um, from PU to ZU, this is a drop. We see Articuno dropping from PU to ZU. Uh, it's interesting because I think, like, just even looking at top 10 in usage, Subroost Articuno looks really good. Uh, but in terms of ZU, Subroost Articuno looks even better. Even though there's, like, one fire type up here, which is Center Scorch. But Subroost can smack everything else. So, that'd be fun to see. Uh, they'll watch out for Rock Blast from that. But, uh, overall, don't really have uh, too, too, too many other thoughts to say. Um, I do think that Zapdos will be back. I think that Latios will eventually be back. It's something that I'm going to be uh, using myself for sure at a point. Um... Happy to see Kiram finally move up. Happy to see Mian Xiao and Rose Ray. I'm tired of fighting them in NU. So very, very happy. Uh, though obviously Mian Xiao was banned. Yes. NU BL. But I was I was tired of fighting Rose Ray in, in freaking NU as well. Um, um Though I loved using it. Because <laughs> that's how it is, right? We hate fighting, but we love using it. But uh, it's cool to see them move up and Mian Xiao finally move up to RU. We all called that Mian Xiao move up to RU right when it fell. Uh, to the NU tier before it got banned as well. Just because it was so freaking good. And Magnezone being right back up at OU where it belongs. Same thing with Kiram, Bisharp, Skarm, things like that. And a lot of you will return as well, though you are officially a new BL Knight. But guys, let me know your thoughts on all the tier changes. And like I said, if you missed it, because you probably did since I uploaded late last night, check out the new uh, the newest episode of Mega Insta High Ladder. We used a physical Mega DNC, and it was really, really good. It was really good. Uh, this Max Tag DNC is a threat. But uh, yeah, check that out. 
feel free to sub if you guys have it. I'm on my way to 260k. I'm like I'm like 30 subs away from 260k. So we're really really close. If you did enjoy or yeah or not whatever, uh, let me know your thoughts. I'll see you next time. Peace.